everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cape Rugby TV. Nice to have you along. It is, of course, Wednesday night and your favorite rugby show, Cape Rugby TV. We're bringing you the very best in this very wet weather of what's happening in the world of club rugby. The entire Convicts crew is together tonight. Morgan Newman, hello, Morgs. How's it, James? How are you doing? Not too bad. Good, good, good. Jerome Parva, how are you? JP, very good. Lekker om weer terug te wees. I just quickly got to show you. Jerome, thanks for the coffee. Pleasure, JP. Don't take... This is beans. Yeah, but you can... Grind it. You can grind it. I'm going to grind it now as well. What happened to instant? Here. Did I do any lock in glass? Mr. H, how are you? I'm fine, sir. I'm fine. Yourself? Not too bad. Can you believe that we now actually have to grind our own coffee? Yeah, I just listened to that guy, you know. He comes late. He, 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 he doesn't turn up for a show. He goes Anna, to Kenya. Anna, Anna, Anna. No, but that, you know, that's the work ethic of the younger generation. Yeah. You know? Jerome, you feel happy now that I've put you in the younger generation category? <laughs> or do you feel unhappy because I've mildly insulted you? JP, I went to fetch my uh, son's friend. Uh, he, came, he came from Italy uh, at the airport Friday. And yeah. the lady stopped me. And he said, hey, JP is looking for you. Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> so I told him where I'm going to be. <laughs> Let's get straight into the results. It was, it's been really wet. The fields have been, uh, it's been unbelievably difficult weather too to play rugby in, but the teams have been out there, the clubs have been out there, they're getting out, coaches are there, and most importantly, the fans have been out there. It's been ridiculous. I mean, it's quite surprising just how strong club rugby is and how many fans are going out to enjoy the games. Uh, but let's start with some of the results then, and we'll start off with Super League A. Morgs, and we will ask you, obviously, because you're currently playing for Hammies. Um, uh, I wouldn't say hiding, but 16-12. SK Warmers, of course, home ground for SK. Uh, what went wrong? Hey, look, James, it's a tough game. Obviously, it's never easy going down to the track and, and getting a result, and... Yeah, conditions didn't didn't really go according to to how we would have liked it to have been, and the I mean the field was a complete you know, nightmare. But uh, you know what? We just didn't rock up, and I think SK really played some good rugby, so why, they deserved it. Just give us a elaborate a little bit. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, but why do you say the field was a nightmare? Now look, well, they've got a pitch in the middle of the field, and with all the rain that's been taking place, it's just been I mean you could barely see your bootlaces in amongst all the mud really? and and the wet so yeah we struggled a little bit obviously the ball once the ball lands in it it's it's com you know it's a complete nightmare but yeah i mean look it's the same for both sides and obviously sk just rocked up and played some good rugby and, and we were fast asleep i think the other team that had a good win over the weekend was um Der bell beating uh, bell 48 points to five and mr h if we look at that game uh, bell R that that was uh, uh last weekend bell R against tigerberg you know they're, they're playing pretty good rugby it was a dry game Nevertheless, but I mean, for, for Durbel to come out there, they just, that's their complete domination, 48-5 over, um, over Bell R. Yeah, scoring seven tries in a match, you know, shows a total domination. And uh, I think Durbel is now at, at this stage where, you know, they're really sensing that they can do something, uh, you know, excellent this season. So they're putting think, everything into it. Do you think it's a little bit like they've uh, kind of, I don't know, settled into, into the settled into being back in club rugby after the varsity cup i mean uh, the, the community the community cup. cup yeah probably and they they've also you know adjusted to to back to club rugby yeah community yeah. cup is something different helderberg was a win for them 11-6 over belleville we know how they're doing jerome um belleville taking a, a knock there did you manage to watch that game uh no jp i was um the kenyan guys are, st are still here so i was uh I'm busy with them, but um, I believe that um, it was close and uh, inter intercept try at the end. Um, yeah. That's where Yaldeberg um, sneak in to get the, the win. Again, and, uh, but it was storming out there. I believe yeah, no. it was a big storm. It was storming that's why it's such a low scoring game because, you know, like last time when we were out in Belleville and watched that game, it was quite, quite good rugby. Yeah. And um, I mean, the guys, uh, they said it was quite a good game also, but I mean, the way the weather was, it wasn't a day for tries yeah. in running rugby. Let's take a look now at the results in Super League B. Goodwood uh, beating Bracknell 26 points to 17. False by 43-3 over NNK. UWC beating Primrose 31-15. And Kells River beating Hands and Hearts. Uh, I think the, the, score, the, the one that everybody was looking out for, Mr. H, and you were, you were alluding to it last week, was UWC up against Primrose. Um, yeah. Home ground advantage for, for UWC. Um, but, I mean, Primrose is a strong side. Yeah, but, but still the, the, the result is surprisingly, you know, high in favor of UWC. But I suppose UWC has got, you know, they've got their ducks in a row now. Yeah. 
and uh, one can expect that uh, they're not easily going to let go of, of their position. They, they are class outfit, they know what they're doing, and for Primrose it will now be to, you know, not to let go. Mm -hmm. Fight back now, and because in the past, Primrose had been in this position where they win five or six games and then the wheels come off. Yeah, the other interesting result on the weekend was uh, Kells River, 44-10 over Hans and Arts. And, um, I mean, we've seen Hans and Arts, they, 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 they started okay, but Kells River getting stronger through the season now, a good win for them again. Yeah, look, they had a close run against uh, UWC also. So. Yeah, well, I mean, that was a controversial yeah. controversial decision, and I mean, if you count, count it by the 80, Kells River won that game. <laughs> If you count it by the 87, yeah. um, then, uh, <laughs> then, you know, then, then UWC did win the, that game. But, the, yeah. well, they, they, I suppose uh, the only thing that counts really is the score. So but the it, it's interesting to see, you know, how the teams, even Goodwood, I mean, they, never, they now won three games in a row or something like that. Yeah. It shows that they also, you know, getting the act together. Yeah. Uh, in Premier League, eh, it's uh, Scottsdale um, uh, losing to Rangers, 29 points to 22. Another good result there. And then, of course, Salarians. Uh, we're 34 nil over St. George's. I was at that game. Crafontaine beating uh, Vill Peniel Villages 30 points to 11. Salarians, it was absolutely pouring. This was a game that you cannot believe how wet it was. Folks, so you're going to have to excuse, once again excuse the footage. We are operating on our sort of low budget, so to speak. Getting out there with the umbrellas that were getting blown away. The cameraman was getting blown away. The mud on the side of the field was just ridiculous. But the thing that was great on the side of the fields was the amount of fans. So Lowry's Pass Village, uh, John Brits and the guys there really know how to bring that Helderberg Basin together. Lyndon Julies is out there doing a lot of public relations. So no wonder that you can pull together two, three, four thousand fans around a club game. The highlights of Salarians up against St. George's. Let's take a look. It's, be a, it's a derby, so it's nice all going to be hard. So do you want to think my guys? Nice game. And I should Lowry as well. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the interesting facts around that game. Some, some of the firsts that we've seen. First of all, the weather was ridiculous. Okay, it's not really a first, but uh, maybe a first in terms of extreme conditions. Sort of, call it extreme filming. So uh, extreme filming. And, and then, Mr. H, this is the first time ever that we've seen in any of the club games where the president of the, of the team, puts, he puts himself in front of the team to run out was, before was the team. Was he there by mistake? So did he try to get out of the way or was he no, running out? I think that the team was actually waiting for him to take his position and then he ran out 
Well done, John Brits. Yeah, so it's uh, interesting there. The first time that we see the president, I suppose, in a way, um, you know, considering that like he is the leader in that community, maybe he's maybe that's something that that, that it's it's either no, a, no, no, no. it's, it's yeah. either a very um, it's either a very embarrassing thing or it's either a fantastic yeah. thing. I will go for the fantastic. This is president's run out in front. Yeah. At but, yeah, but well, we could have not? some. I can, I can see Tello Wakefield can, running Mr. out Wakefield, yeah. in front with Jean de Villiers <laughs> yeah. coming out first. Um, no. <laughs> who are the other presidents that we've got at other unions? Uh, Morgs, what do you think? Hey, John Smith will be running out of Wendy. John Smith is, of course, we'll running out no, Dave Kagan will run out of Hamilton. Dave Kagan can run out of Hamilton. Uh, John Smith, of course, is going to be the CEO. Oh, and, the uh, CEO, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then the other first that I, that I saw there is I've never in my life seen a fly off take a, a, a conversion so quickly. Earl, <laughs> Earl Rose put that ball down. He put it down, he walked in and kicked it and he was gone. It was in under one and a half seconds. I've never seen anyone take a kick that quickly, other than maybe if it was a quick drop to get. <laughs> Morgs, have you ever seen a fly take a kick like that? No, that, that is a first for me, but uh, yeah, with uh, Earl Rose's talent I and skill, he, there's no reason why he yeah, can't. But I think he didn't want to move back because he was scared that he might slip coming on, you know, so he just stood there and kicked the yeah, ball. Yeah, that's very, very no, true. I, no, no, no. I, I, let me tell you, Earl playing at Solorians, he's very <laughs> casual. He just plays his rugby, he's having a lot of fun, he's not too worried, he just knows he's going to put the ball down, he's going to kick it over and carry on. And then after that, he's going to go for fish and chips. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so, Earl Rose there, and of course, um, Wayne Julie's also um, playing there at Solorians, a great game. Um, but interestingly enough, obviously, it's a derby match. Solorians, St. George's, this was going to be it was always going to be a bit of niggle, a close to, to home, two community clubs coming together, although Solorians really is more of a professional outfit than, a, than truly an <laughs> amateur club. Um, but, so there was always going to be a bit of niggle. And we've had to see in the community space, clubs sort their niggle out first. Um, Jerome, I mean, you'd agree with me, in the beginning, there's a bit of niggle. And then they're either going to fight through the whole game or they're going to settle it and then get on with the game. Yeah, definitely, JP. I mean, the, the guys all know each other. And uh, um, I think that uh, um, they just want to sow. And uh, obviously, I know, like you said, Salorians, it's not easy. So St. George's, a uh, bit disappointing to see. I mean, they didn't even have any points, no points. Uh, yeah. I know the conditions wasn't good. So, so the interesting thing about that game is that Joey Salman, who has referees at the highest level, it was his first time at, at Salorians. He told us in the aftermatch function, it was his first time ever that he refed at Salorians at you know, in the, in the village itself. And um, it, was, it was really fantastic to watch a referee of that caliber bring a team, two teams, under control. We saw it last week in the, um, where were we last week? We're losing track of all the games. We, we, go to, we were Belha up against Tigerberg. Mm. We saw the referee there. He called a stop to things in five minutes. He gave the teams a lecture. And after that, there was no more niggle. And Joey Salman brought the two teams and kept them under control. And interestingly enough, his challenge was to keep the game flowing because it was so wet. It was so difficult to play in those conditions. He kept the, ball, the game flowing, but he also settled the, the, the mm -hmm. game very quickly. Morgan, it helps to have a good referee on your side. No, Not no, on your so side, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> because I know a few people have been asking if John Brits bought the referee. <laughs> no, it will be nice to have you on your side. But no, in general, yeah, I mean, look, in conditions like that, it's really difficult for a ref to, to manage a game. Obviously, there's so many knock-ons and it's advantage and it's whether the advantage is over and at what stage, you know. So, obviously, you know, with a little bit of experience, that sort of, you know, it comes to the fore and you can actually see and manage the game in terms of if you can get a game under those conditions to flow, then you, I think you, you've really chosen a good ref and, you, and you've got somebody good. So, from what I've, from what I've heard, I think uh, Joey obviously managed the, handled the game very well. Well, it was the first time out there for Joey Salman, a uh, legendary referee and uh, a referee of great caliber. We managed to catch up with him after the game. Let's see if you can see him in the darkness while we were filming. Check this out. Joey Salman, Western Province rugby referee. You're no stranger to big encounters, and tonight was one of those. Yeah, it was definitely. I mean, I've had a couple of derbies in my life, uh, but I think this is probably one of the top ones. Eh? I mean, I, I've never been here before, and it's been amazing. From a refereeing point of view, a little bit of niggle, but nothing serious. You yeah. seem to get that under control. Yeah, I think I think the players all know each other, so therefore it's about let's see who gets the first advantage. And oh, my, my job was just to calm everybody down and just get on with it. Did the wet weather have an effect from a refereeing point of view? Well, I'm still <laughs> I'm still shaking, so yeah, it does. And I'm, I'm I'm still yeah, but anyway, on the field it was great, and we keep we keep going, keep warm. Yeah, now listen, Jay, again, uh, it's your kind of expertise that I think that that helps to manage these games. So, thanks again. Thank you very much and well done to the home team. They played very well. <laughs> Here we go. 
Joey Salmon, of course, um, in a position there to, to bring his expertise to the game. So, so great to see Joey there. And uh, I've never seen a referee shiver so much. <laughs> um, is there any way, Mr. H, that you can... Anyway, let me leave the, the old the how do you get a referee on your side scenario. <laughs> but it, it, was, it was a great game. And um, uh, without that kind of uh, expertise, we could have seen that game get out of hand. But both teams there coming from the same neck of the woods, playing some great rugby. And I'm looking forward to see what's going to happen in, at the Helderberg Basin with more public relations as, as we see those two teams, those four teams really, Strand Pioneers, Helderberg, Strand, St. George, Solorians. These are five teams in that area that can come together and really form a unit in terms of uh, uh, public awareness for rugby in, in the Helderberg region of stage. Yeah, no, they can, they can do a lot there. And, and the people there in that area are very passionate about their rugby. You know, um, in the olden days, the, those clubs, uh, they really drew thousands of people to their fields. Yeah, yeah. that was, uh, tell us more about that because uh, it was yeah. before my time. <laughs> <laughs> in the olden days. Yeah. <laughs> Jerome, <laughs> were you around in the olden days? No, no, thank you. Morgs, were you around in the olden days? Yeah, James, I remember those days like it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, um, have you still got any of those um, black and white um, photographs from those days? Mr. <laughs> yeah, there might be a few around. Okay. Because you probably don't have any colour photographs. <laughs> 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 All right, then. We'll see if we can find out some of the olden day photographs from the back in the day there. But in, Mr. H, you should actually have been there because, I mean, that old neck of the woods is your, your, your grandfather started St. George's and you used to live in St. Larry's Pass. Yeah, no, it was unfortunate that I couldn't be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, no. <coughs> um, yes, I suppose. Depends. Depends on who, who's looking. <laughs> All right, then. We managed to catch up with the losing uh, coach and captain of St. George's. Will, the Cr Will Burke Crock is the coach there. And our, um, Isidore Amin is, of course, the captain there. It didn't go their way, but nevertheless, they kept their chins up and they know that there's a way forward for them. Let's catch up with the uh, losing captain and coach from St. George's. Uh, Will Burke, what a derby match. St. George's, Solorians, the fans are still going mad here. Tough game. Ja, JP, ik denk uh, ons het altijd verwacht en ik denk het is moeilijk om hier naar te komen. Maar ik is een so trotse africhter dat hij staat en ik denk waar vanaf ons kom en, en daar ons betalen jouw spelers en ons, ons het uh, ons bijdrage dus krijgt maar die gemeenschap uit. Maar dus ons ik is vandaan trots en ik denk geluk aan zijn Laurens. Ik denk al het was geweest waar die verschil is tussen een professionele klap en een amateur klap. Um, net hier um, die kwaliteit spelers, die kwaliteit diepte. Maar ek, soos ek gesê, is baie trots en ek denk ons het harde werk wat voorlee, maar ons gaan, ons gaan terug gaan. Wat die type dinge gaan jylle opwerk vir die rest van die seizoen? Ek denk aan ons, uh, ons, um, ons moet je aanpas by die weersomstandighede. En in die eerste helft het ons die druk geabsorbeer. In die tweede helft het ons, het, het ons hulle tyd en spasie gegeen. En so dis waar ons gaan werk en ons verdedigingsleinge. Maar soos ek sê, is baie trots en ons moet gaan terug en ons gaan hard werk volgende week. Dus ons af, so dan vat ons weer vir Elsie hier oor twee weke. Well, Elsie, so you're going to have your work, uh, you're going to have your work cut out for you, so to speak, as the Susie Engelsman said. But listen, watching St. George's and the spirit of the of the whole Elderberg Basin, Silurian, Stamp Pioneers, you guys have been amazing. Yeah, no, I think, and I think for you, what you've got to do is to get So, I think we can pad stop, and club rugby can it before the read here. But I'm very proud of it. Thank you for our understanders, who have been here, and who have been here, and who have been here, and who have been here. En voor mij boys wel dan. Ik denk dat ze het hard gefight. Maar op het eind van die dag is het net zeker een cold wat je, je wat niet je kan toe gaan en dat draaien game. Maar je zegt het bij het trots. Nee, maar wel gedaan, wel bij ons. Zien jullie weer. Oké, okay, bedankt JP. Isidore, uh, uh, it was always going to be a derby match. Tough game. Solarians at home. They've been doing fantastic. But the spirit in the St. George's team, it looks like it's big. Ja, yeah, it's big, but congratulations. First of all, congratulations to the Solarians team on their big effort. And they, they were the best team on the day. What do you guys do going forward now? Uh, we'll have to pick up the, st uh, the scraps and go back to the drawing board and prepare for our next match. Your players, you know, when you, when you have a derby match like this and you can bring out so many fans and you can bring out so many players, it means things looking forward are looking good. Yeah, it's always good. We are a community club and we play for our community. And uh, rugby brings communities together and it's good for rugby. Oh, listen, well done. Fantastic spirit, yeah, and we, we love seeing the, the support. Okay, thank you for coming out. Isidore Amin, the captain there at um, St. George's, and Wilbur Crock. Uh, Morgs, you say Wilbur was at uh, Stellenbosch. I saw from him in that neck of the woods. Yeah, he used to coach around there last year when I was still there. So, yeah, good coach, and obviously, you know, imparting a bit of his knowledge on, on St. George's, and I'm sure they'll 
they'll pick it up and they'll they'll get the results. You know, one or two results along the way. I think more importantly is probably uh, the fact that he's importing some of his uh, language skills there. Yeah, look, he is a very well-spoken Afrikaans um, well, gentleman. Well, they are so lekker Afrikaans. We come there from the and he so praat ons lekker the rugby and the voorspelers, and how people are going to go with the spell. Yeah, Jeps, uh, that was well said. <laughs> Wolks, you're right. But, uh, Jeps. but it's, it's never nice to lose to your neighbours, you know. You always seem to... Uh, you know, it was a big day, there was a lot of uh, things happening in the community and then you walk away and you didn't score. And you yeah, it's not nice to, 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 to lose your neighbours. That's why I firmly believe, don't ever greet your neighbours. Don't get to know them, like at your house. Don't say hello to the neighbours because when, when you come home in your car, they expect you to stop and talk to them. It's better. Don't even know the neighbours. You know, rather just leave the neighbors alone, especially if they have chickens or geese. <laughs> because my neighbors have got geese on the one side and chickens on the other side. You feel as if a class play, not so at Wilbur. Especially if your neighbors has more money than you. Yeah, no, if they've got more money than you, then that's definitely a, definitely a situation. In which case, all four of us ignore the, the neighbors. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, no, not nice losing to the, to, to the neighbors, so to speak. Uh, it sounds like uh, Mr. H has been hanging around at the uh, uh, four in the neighbors table again. Um, but <laughs> Mr. H is busy. Yeah, give us the right tell. Uh, Two by the neighbors or who's ever? Go on with the show. Go on with the show. <laughs> All right, then. Yes, okay, so the winning captain and coach was um, at St. George's, um, at least at St. Solorian's, and the winning uh, uh, captain there, Edwin. Badai and um, JP Zalia. We managed to catch up with them. It was a great day for them. Pulling off the win, staying on top of the log. Salarians, captain and coach. Does JP meet JP? Some at JP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there we go. JP Zalia, Avrechter, he's all by uh, Salarians. Jelle owns it for every year so far. A fantastic season gehad. Jelle is top of the log. The spelers is he so, the geest is he so. It feels like a lekker. Ja, wat ons, weet het, het komt met een goede jaar uit, dus we gaan het goed met ons. Ach, het ach, al vijf met bonuspunten gewin en uh, zoals ik zei, die structuur is een plek. En ze praat van ze lopen, ze het niet goed, nee, glad niet. We gaan meer van onze structuur en ook club, club rugby wat moet gezond wees. Dus het is nog steeds een gemeenschapsclub, speel het die hele tijd, speel ons rugby goed. En uh, zoals je vandaag kan gezien het, die alle supporters. Die het nooit vergeet nie. Jy het een paar groot games gehad, had so ver, ek meen, uh, ek denk laas weet, was 55-0 in die peril, en daar was nog een paar ander groot scores ook. Um, daar is definitief een soort van een wen gees, hulle praat van een rugby, as jy een wen gees het, dan gaan dit makkelijker. Dit, is dit ietsie wat dier die span loop op die oomlik, die, die gevoel van jy weet hoe om te wen? Een baie goeie atmosfeer, uiteindelijk in die, in die kamp. Ons sit met spelers wat precies weet wat van hulle verwacht word. Ons sit met een baie vergrote groep, 30 spelers, wat ons enige dag, enige tijd, kan, enig, en, enig een van hulle kan, kan opbring. En uh, soos ek sê, as jy een goeie geest sit, gaan het automatisch met jou goed. En jy het natuurlijk een paar ookies hier so wat, wat senior leadership verskaf, ek meen Owens, soos, soos Earl Rose en, en, en Wayne Julius, anders wat ek om nou soos ken, soos Koeries. <laughs> maar ons gaan nou lang pad terug, maar dit, hulle, dit, om hulle leadership skills in die, in die, in die, in die, in die spelling te bring, help ook. Baie goeie uh, uh, ding om hulle hier te het by ons, uh, ons kan net uh, blij wees dat ons met die manne kan, dat ons sikke manne aan boord het. En uh, ja, hulle bring hulle, hulle leerskap na vore, onder die jangsters, bring het dier. So dit, dit, dit maak het net vir ons makkelijk, dit ja. maak het net vir my makkelijk as Afrika. Ok, JP, van die een JP na die ander JP, wel gedaan. Ja, sê, dankie man. <laughs> Edward, uh, great game for you guys. Uh, wasn't easy though, uh, wet weather, but of course St. George's bring it out. Maar ons het altyd geweet, St. George's, hulle is julle vire, hulle gaan het bring vandag. Ja, ons het verweet dat het so wees, ons as vriende, ons as saam na die klein, ons verweet dat het hard wees. Facebook oorhaal was het een harde ene, kinders op straat te praat, allemaal altijd van die game. Ja. So die week het ons het hard uitgehaal op die oefenveld, ons het in die donker te beer gedraf en ons het alles uitgehaal vandag. Nou, uh, ja, ek meen julle is uh, thans top of your log, Salorians doen fantastisch, waaran gaan julle werk uh, voor hem toe? Ons gaan het harder werk en ons wil hoogtes bereik, ons wil super uitspeel enig en ek dink, ons het die kans, ons het die man om daar te speel. Ja. Nee, maar hij is weer wel gedaan. Ik weet, het was een soort van een beetje van een nigel game, maar niet te veel niet. 
En, en toen toe was die spel aan? Ja, die spel was aan. Oos het gewit, hulle gaan kom, hulle gaan kom. Oos moet net kalm wees. Ja. Die dambal gaat breuk en op einde het er een breuk. Nee, nee, recht zo. Wel, wel, wel gedaan, my man. Baie dankie. Oké, okay, see you. Yeah, so Solarian's a good win for them. Um, the uh, man of the match, of course, was uh, Benny Adams on the day. This was another first for us, where um, not only did uh, we uh, have so much rain, and the president of a club ran out together with the team, but the man of the match also walked away, literally walked away with a man of the match check, which we now still have to get back. <laughs> we turned around, <laughs> Mr. Agent, I can see that the check back is. <laughs> I believe it's coming back tomorrow. Okay, so I didn't want to go in there by the ATM. Yeah, no. The own stuff of Yerka won't my right check of the soup for Hru ATM. All right, so Benny Adams was the man of the match there. Also, John Brits, the president, uh, helping us to hand over the uh, man of the match check. Let's catch up with him. Benny Adams, ask the money so by Salorians for you. I'm a lekker game for the heart. Yeah, by a lekker. By a nut, and um, I go to the instance from my fancy by a donkey. And I will go to Georgia, say, check the foreign two. En um, koos vir die jaar. Nou Benny, ek moet vir jou sê, jy het vandag so, so lekker gespeel, ons gaan vir jou 1000 rand gee van Tata. Tata, Bye, die skare hier so, hulle is maal oor. Tata is natuurlijk die, die uh, man of the match sponsor hier so by die Cape Rugby TV show. Dat is 1000 rand van Ivan Lindner en Tata, van uh, Tata Oostenberg en Tata Perl Valley. En dan gaan vir jou president, minister John Brits vraag om vir ons high check te bring. Oom John, as, as ons high check hier, hier kan ook kry, Daar is hy, hy gaan met jou kom hand skut. Daar is hy meneer, wel gedaan. Daar is hy, jy kan maar die, jy kan maar die check, daar is hy vast hoor met. Um, um, John, uh, jy is die man, uh, jy is die man hier so achter die Riespan, die Riespan, die community, die geest van die span, die spelers, hulle doen dat allemaal fantastisch. Ek, ek denk as, uh, as een beetje te erg. Ek probeer maar net soos die ander, om een bijdrage te lever. Jy weet, dit is een gemeenskap die. En voor ons is het belangrijk om die gemeenschap op te hef. En my maatschappij Asla en een beetje van die borstkap van sy train is ons bezig om dit recht te kry. Die man wat die twee drie gescoord het, is Steven Brits. Hy is een boerling van sy Lauris Paas, ongelukkig, my klinkend. Maar hy die laatste twee drie kom skoor. So is nie net dat ons met professionele spelers speel, maar ons ontwikkel die plaaslijke product. Yeah. En ek ga nou vraag dat hy dametjes moet vir Benny sing asjeblief. Alright, oom John, dat ek vir jou net weer wel gedaan sê. Ons sien Asla elke woensdag aan die jersey, so Laurense jersey is op die show. <laughs> en natuurlijk die, die supporters van die Heldenburg area. Benny en jylle ons weer van Tata en so. Amal is op die social media. Hier begin die song nou. <laughs> right folks, that's a wrap from Gay Bradby TV. Congratulations again from Tata. We'll see you tomorrow. Don Brits is a leader there in his community, Mr. H. Uh, it obviously helps to have a winning side, but there comes a time, winning side, getting to there, but you want to make sure that you, because I mean, he was talking about keeping the smoke away. Often he was talking about men saying the smoke away, there's nobody, but the smoke away is near, there's nobody going. The dwellings, any months about the throw me into slime. Is not anybody I see a Lisbon game. The kind of what the straw the wrong article, but it's not Daniel Lisbon game. But the ICT program what you should get shook that he that he as a span good that it end like okay, begin good natilla for the club base, but it moot each spool that he can scap to it. It like my this begin a beer by slow is pass. Yeah, that is end like the reader warm of me is on sport deal me. So that the evils for that better than this can forget from in the you all your efforts in sit in the in in the spell. But how long will it take for a president or a chairman or a coach of another club to learn that? Because it seems like it's all about the winning. I mean, there's a derby match. There was a, a school derby match, and I'm not going to mention the two teams that played two high schools, Cape Town's biggest derby match. And it seemed like for those parents around that field who come from an advantaged community, privileged area, got all the money in the world, it seemed like for them the only thing that was important was absolute domination on the day. They didn't seem to care about the well-being of the children. They didn't seem to care about whether or not these kids would actually play rugby again in the future. Because if I was a child playing for a team like that and they put me under so much pressure, you can be guaranteed I'm not going to play club rugby after that. How long does it take or what does it take to convince coaches, parents and everything that, like you said, it's about 
rugby is a, a, a tool. Yeah, it's it, it's very difficult because the people out there, all you know, in the South African public in particular, they are so uh, set on the team must win. You know, it doesn't matter which team it is. I mean, we even had hopes that Bafana Bafana would win win the goal the World Cup. It was never going to be on, you know. But we <laughs> had that. What's wrong with you? Who had those hopes? Yeah, well, it was <laughs> like really. I mean, did you really <laughs> hope that? No. <laughs> But okay. uh, people, you know, they go to the field and they don't understand yeah. that that team is equally well prepared. They will easily, they can easily beat you. But that's not, that's not in the minds of those people. That the other people, you know, they, them, their team is the only team that must win. And that's where it comes. And it's it's sad when when parents don't set the example for their children. Well, I can tell you that uh, some of the, the, the in the community space, you know, being at Salorians. And, and I can see that it was amazing to have people around there. But, you know, we've, we've been around to a lot of the community clubs. And I think people really have to start getting a grip. It, it struck me hard on, on Saturday that people really have to get a grip. That the sport of rugby and the sport of club rugby is there to help the communities. Because, you know, we don't want to be negative about club rugby. But those parents around the side of the field, they must start learning to set an example. It is unacceptable to be fighting in the stands. It is, I mean, we've been to a number of games now. It is un unacceptable to be spitting on the neighboring team. It is unacceptable to be drinking that much alcohol in front of children. the other little children. Or to swear, you know. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do things there that you would not do at your house. If you are doing it there, nine out of ten times you're actually doing it at home also. You know, fighting, drinking, swearing. So... Don't show the people what you do behind your closed doors. Jerome, what do you do? What do you, how do you explain to a parent that is watching a game, or a husband that is watching a game, that they need to learn something at the game, that they're there for the good of the community, that it's not necessary to be so happy, can't find felt on your throat to clap me, or from your five-year-old light, the, 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 the pap sack to gaan haal me. That's exactly what you, what you say, JP. It's, it's all about a community. But also, you need to educate the people that um, certain things are on, certain things are not uh, on, on. Like people get into rugby field, they all look like players, but you could see that guy who he can't play, he's about 40, 50 years old, but he walks in with a talk bag. And how do you stop that? I mean, you can't go in with, with the wine and go and drink and things like that. So if we don't stop that, and if you don't educate the people, it's about the enjoyment and to have fun. And um, how do you relieve stress? If you go there and you stress more than you stress at home, and you swear the ref and you swear the opposition and everything is wrong. So I think it's about the clubs educating the people. The, it's the responsibility of the club to tell the people. When it comes a time, there comes a time <coughs> when people must realize that we are not just doing this show for the sake of rugby ra TV, you know, there's a bigger picture and that is the changing of lives of people. But it brings us back to what we spoke of during the Varsity Cup, you know. The entertainment that is created there by the club, you know, causes the people to come and watch the game. It causes them to forget about the other things that is happening. And even if the team lose, they enjoy the entertainment. Yeah. So yeah. clubs must look at that also, you know, that aspect and not just say, come to our match and sit here and watch the game. There must be some other activities for them also to be involved in. Yeah, look, I think we've still got a long way to go. So, yes, we've made club rugby more um, popular than ever before, and clubs are doing better than ever before, and rugby players are playing better rugby than ever did before in the club space. We're seeing more uh, development. But it's time now for us to say, okay, so we've got there. But now the next level is that that positive aspect of the rugby field must move into the community space. So don't forget, that is your actual big challenge, is how do you make sure that you support the community? Because playing good rugby on a day and winning in the log and uh, winning the championship at the end of the day is just not enough. We're gonna take an ad break, and when we come back, we've got several great competitions for you. We're gonna be giving away our Cap Rugby TV T-shirt for the uh, photograph, for the caption of the week, the Evox Advanced Nutrition uh, competition is coming up, so keep your cell phones handy. And a couple of other competitions, of course, Tata and Leisure Group in the mix as well. We'll be back with you guys in a sec. 
So it's, uh, of course, several other results um, up in the mix. Um, and uh, let's quickly take a look at some of those results. Then, of course, some interesting games there over the weekend. And uh, we can start off now by just looking at the results in uh, Division 1. Or at least let, let's just wrap up Premier League B quickly. Some interesting results there. Van der Stel, 42-13 over Strand United. Young Peoples beating Manamo Grangers. Langa losing to Easter Fear in Division 1. Uh, Violets, a win for them. Hamadier is a win for them. Rocklands, 19 all over Busy Bees. Atlantis with a win, and Northerns with a win over Lagunia, 28-23. One Division Two. it was a massive win for Kalamoa over Watsonia. Uh, Masi Pumulele, 14-6 over the Young Stars. Blue Jets come away with a win, All Saints with a win. Caledonian Roses loses to Blue Stars. In Division Three. Clutisville, a two-point win for them over Whistling Wheels. Strand Pioneers, 34-15 over Richmond Rangers, while Imikawi beat Perseverance, 19 points to 12. In Division Four. it was a 10-7 win for Titans, and Delft, 10-15 loss for them against Thistle. On the Pal region, Albion's with a win, Young Gardens with a win, Young Standards with a massive win, Riverstones losing to Paul and uh, Vineyards 75-7 over Peril United, while Violet's Paul beat Simondium 20 points to 6. And in the farm region, in the Simorsburg region, or the Paul Le uh, Farm League, so to speak, Le Wanley beating Excelsior 8 points to 6. Those are, of course, your uh, club rugby results. It is now time for us to take a look at the um, Evox competition. Evox Advanced Nutrition is, of course, the official sports nutrition supplier to Western Province Rugby and the DHL Stormers. Right, so tonight we're going to give away for you, as we normally do, a whole lot of stuff in the Evox competition. So you want to win yourself a Synergy Advanced Nutrition uh, Whey Protein. This is, of course, the official protein of the DHL Stormers. If you want to win this, double three two eight zero. Get your cell phones handy and tell us, of course, uh, your name and what is the uh, favorite product of the DHL Stormers. We'll throw for you in with together with that a shaker 600 you've seen me dismantle this that is in the mix we're also going to give you a uh, evox tray all right everybody needs this uh, water bottle tray at your um, squad uh, for your team of course water bottles go in here and you can have this running onto the field okay so it's the synergy whey protein Let's see if we can balance this it's a synergy whey protein together with the uh, the, uh, the tray the water bottle tray together with a shaker 600 Remember the tray you must give to your club. And then the absolute bonus on top of that, we give you this week our very first Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. There you see it up for grabs, the Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. And you can see that nice and close there. And uh, of course on the back there it says Cape Rugby TV at sign, as in our Twitter sign, at Cape Rugby TV, loving club rugby. Remember you're the ones that help us choose this. And um, on the front, of course, the Cape Rugby TV logo, together with our sponsor, Evox. So you want to win this, the t-shirt, the water bottle tray, the Synergy Whey Protein, you can just uh, SMS your answer to 33280. And there you see it on the screen right now. SMS Evox your name and answer to 33280. And you put yourself in the mix to win this prize. Last week's winner, congratulations to Etienne Lowe. You are last week's winner. You win for yourself that Evox hamper. Right, folks, so if you want to win this uh, fantastic prize, 33280. And you put yourself in the mix to win this hamper. Okay, so there we go. Of course, uh, we also had our Facebook fan pick competition. Let's take a look at um, what happened there in the, the, the pictures. We've been asking you to send in those pictures. Of course, we're looking for the fans on the side of the field also to be sending. Tigerberg, we have, we've been running this competition for about two weeks now. And I asked Morgan Newman to choose for us uh, a very tasteful caption. And he chose it out of about 50, 70, 60, 70, 100 entries or so. And um, Morgan decided to choose. Uh, Morgs, let's have a look at your fan pick there that you chose. There we go. There was the picture, of course, in the match between Tigerberg and, um, or at least not, it was Helderberg and, and um, Belleville. Um, and Cameron Isaacs. Cameron Isaacs, Morgs, is your winner. And you, what, what was the, um, the caption for the pick, pick of the week? <laughs> Jeff, it was a, I thought it was a fairly witty uh, comment from Cameron Isaacs. And it's, uh, it says the only crack in defense, Jeff. So, yeah, I think he, um, obviously on the day, he obviously was at the field and he maybe let one or two tackles by and he seemed to be the only crack in defense. So, I thought it was fairly witty and, you know, a pun on the word crack. So, yeah, I think so, Cameron, um, Cameron deserves to win that Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. All right, Morgs, well, you can, um, uh, all right, here, here we see it again. Okay, so Cameron, congratulations. Our Evox winner is going to win a t-shirt. And Cameron, you walk away with the Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. There you can see it, folks. Cape Rugby TV, nice and big. And you'll be able to get that and you can wear it around the side of the field. So if you want to win yourself a Cape Rugby TV t-shirt, stay in the mix for the fan pick competitions. We're looking for those fan picks every week. Okay, so... The Cape Rugby TV answer then, um, uh, also, we had a, ran another competition. We asked you over the weekend, who was Salarian's uh, going to play against over the weekend? And the answer to that was, quite simply, St. George's, and that's the game where we were going. 
The winner there for uh, Solarian's uh, competition was Russell Williams. And uh, he went on to say, the great St. George's Rugby Football Club, the heartbeat of Strand Rugby. You see it. So congratulations, Russell Williams. You win for yourself. A Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. So, Morgs, how many Cape Rugby TV t-shirts have we given away? Now, this week, there you we've, go. we've given away three so far, James. Um, I don't even have one yet, so I think I must, um, I think I must in, uh, make sure that I get one of these. But yeah, we've uh, given away three, and I think um, yeah, we keep, must just keep an eye out for the Facebook competitions and the Twitter handles, and never know what competitions are going on so we can give away another three next week. Okay, so we had a couple of other fan picks up as well there. Renzo Botman, again, sending a nice picture here from, um, from Hands and Hearts. Of course, Renzo's been so active uh, in the social media space. Great picture there um, as, as he slots one. What well, looks like, certainly looks like that ball is about to go off. Um, just let's incidentally, if you let's quickly take a look at that photograph again, folks. Now look for the ball. All right, there you can see he's kicking the ball, the the, the, the fly off there, and I'm I'm wondering if that is um, who's our fly off at, at hands and hearts. Uh, it was um, uh, Johnny John Lee. John Lee. John Lee. I'm wondering if that's John Lee kicking the. I love the fact that we know so many of the players and their first name were here on the show. <laughs> anyway, let's take one more look at that photograph. Now, take a look carefully. You'll see the poles, <coughs> and then you see the ball traveling through the picture. Right. So, folks, in the future, what's going to happen is um, you're going to put yourself in a situation that you're going to look at the photograph, and we're going to ask you to choose where is the ball. So look out for that competition coming up soon from the fan picks. And what we'll do is we're going to Photoshop the ball out of the photograph, and you'll have an opportunity to tell us in a grid form where the ball is. Look out for those competitions on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. It's time for us taking an ad break, and when we come back, we'll take a look at some of the fixtures coming up over the weekends. We are going to be this weekend at Violets up against Hamadiyas at Chucker Road. So that is your weekend fixture. Cape Rugby TV getting down there. Come and join us, and we'll maybe even give one of you lucky fans at the game a free Cape Rugby TV t-shirt if you manage to find uh, Mr. H on the side of the field. We'll be back with you guys in a sec. <laughs> Right, so many of you people have been asking for logs. You want to know where the logs are? Of course, it is now the end of the first round. The Cape Rugby TV team has done its best to find the correct logs. Of course, we pulled the logs off the Western Province Club Rugby site. Faisal Felton is the man that updates the uh, logs at the Western Province Rugby Football Union. He sends that through every Sunday night. That goes up on the website. And on a Monday morning, the logs are occurring. Well, hopefully the logs are correct, but the logs are up. So, of course, you must remember to put in your scores. Let's quickly take a look now at the logs. You want to know who's at the top? After the first sort of round of um, club rugby, remember now the universities are on a break. Let's take a look now. Super League A. Super League A at the top of the log is Marty's UCT and Durbel. In Super League B, it's UWC, Primrose and False Bay. In Premier League A, Solorians, Collegians and uh, Cryfontein. Premier League B, Young Peoples, Milneton and Fundestel. In Division 1, Violets, Silverleaf and Atlantis. Leading Division 1 there is Violets. Division 2 sees Masi Pumulele at the top. All Saints, Young Wesleys, while in Division 3, it's Strand Pioneers and Imikawi. Whistling Wills is in third place in Division 3. In Division 4, Bishop Lavis, Kai Lecher, and Young Brothers. In the Paul region, Lower Paul Vineyards, and in third place, Young Gardens. While in the Farm League in the Simmonsburg region, Lamotte is doing extremely well. They've played seven matches. They've got, still got two games in hand, and they're at the top, with Excelsior in second, and Fora are in the third place. So those are your club rugby logs. You can see who's at the top after first round and second round. Let's take a look now at the fixtures coming up this weekend in Super League A. Well, it's Belleville up against SK Wilmers. Tigerberg take on Durbel and Belhar are up against Helderberg. Gentlemen, would you care to make any predictions there? Jerome, Belleville and SK Wilmers at Belleville. It's going to be a tough game for SK. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I mean, uh, Belleville, SK just managed to, to beat them at um, SK the last time they played. So I think it's going to be a tough one. And um, yeah, but SK is playing good rugby at the moment also. So... The other tough one over the, mat, over the weekend is going to be Tigerberg and Durbel. Um, Mr. Age, you were talking earlier on that Durbel seems to be settling, yeah. finding their rhythm. I think it will be a tough one, but it's never easy to go to Tigerberg. You know, to go play at Florida Park, uh, it's never easy. So, Well, I don't know. Tough, tough. If you go down Moradam, which is now, what's the name of the new, then you hit the left into Ravensmead and then down. It's easy to find Tigerberg. Yeah, but it's not easy to go play there. <laughs> 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 Alright, and then of course Beldar take on Helderberg. In Super League B is Primrose and Kales River and Hamlets take on Hands and Hearts. There's going to be another two cracker matches. Crawfontein and Solorians take each other on in uh, Premier League A. Collegians and Scottsdean. Of course Scottsdean are playing away. They're up against at the home uh, Collegians and Lentechia. Um, at the Hutt. 
uh, Rangers of Peniel Villages, Elsie's take on Paul in uh, at Elsie's, and Premier League B, Franz Jukin van der Stel, Strand United and Silver Tree, Milneton and Mannenberg Rangers. While in Division 1, it's Violets and Hamadiers, Wraith B and Lagunia, Rocklands and Atlantis, Boise Bees and Silverleaf. Um, uh, Morgs are Violets and Hamadiers, Chucka Road. Um, Chucka Road's uh, one of those kind of locations that's so easy to get to. It's on the M5 and you just get there and um, we, we should expect a lot of fans out there to, to watch that match. Yeah, Jabs, it's ob obviously always, a, we were there last year and it was, a, you know, there's a massive turnout there. So, yeah, I think there's no reason why there wouldn't be a massive turnout again. I've heard from Mr. H that the fields are quite, are taking a little bit of strain out there. So, it'll be interesting to see if the weather holds out, if, they, if, they, if the weather, you know, if the fields are, are playable, I think. Well, it'll be, the, the real thing, I think, Mr. H, that'll be interesting to see is whether or not the, the rugby poles can stay up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can you know yeah. that? Yeah, so yeah. tumbling down. But <laughs> you know, I've got to get, we're going to actually need to get Cape Rugby TV hard hats. No, I'm not so sure, James. <laughs> well, but you, because you're a cap man. You'll, you'll yeah, I'm a cap guy, not a hard hat guy, James. Yeah, well, we'll see if you pull the cap on again. All right, so uh, Violets, Hammer Deers, um, Chucker Road, this Saturday, that's the game you want to be at. All right, as I said, come down there, and if you manage to get an autograph with Mr. H, uh, the first person who comes to me with Mr. H's autograph on the day gets a Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. You still, where's that t-shirt? Well, show me one more time. Why so, would you, why you put me There it is, Jeps. What, I must put you on the streets? Yeah. I th I th People I run after you, I think they're chasing me around the field. <laughs> yes, I know that. That's part of the fun. You need to get fit. There we go. There you see the t-shirt in Morgz's hands. Uh, Cape Rugby TV t-shirt, I love cl uh, cl loving club rugby. Okay, so that's the thing. That's what you need to do. Um, all right, you need to, on Saturday, find Mr. H, get his autograph, and then you've got to bring it to me. And if you can bring, the first person to bring me Mr. H's autograph, and I'm going to verify that it's right, gets a Cape Rugby TV t-shirt. Uh, Jerome, you going to be there on the day? Um, I'm in Kenya. You're in Kenya? Yeah. Is there any time that you're not in Kenya? Okay, don't worry about that. <laughs> okay. um, all right, so we're going to see you guys at Chucker Road Violets this coming uh, Saturday. Join us on Facebook. Don't forget, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. That's where you post your fan picks. Division 2 sees uh, young stars up against Blue Jets. What's only up against Caledonian Roses while in Division 3? It's going to be Crutisville and Peninsula. Imikawi and Whistling Wheels, Perseverance and Strand Pioneers. Bishop Labors takes on Delft, Police and Young Brothers, Thistle and Titans. In the Powell region, it's Vineyards and Young Garden, Simonsburg. Is of course Lawandli and Blue Stars, Blue Swallows take on Pumas, Lankwadok and Fora, Excelsior and Lamont. Those are your fixtures coming up over the weekend. It's going to be a cracker games. Uh, make sure you get out there and wear your raincoats. We'll take an ad break and when we come back, we're going to wrap it up and uh, see what uh, what else is happening in the world of rugby. Of course, the Springs of Springboks have been playing and we might as well just see how things are going there now that we have got all these superstars on the show with us. We'll be back with you in a, in a sec. Ahead of the game at Cape Rugby TV, Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Make sure that uh, you join us there. And don't forget Twitter, at Cape Rugby TV. We love to watch that back channel, all right? Hash WP Club Rugby is where on a Saturday we all share the scores. And I love uh, scrolling through my phone and looking at everybody sharing their results and uh, some other interesting information on that back channel, all right? So if you're not on, your, on, on Twitter yet, get on Twitter. You want to know what's happening in club rugby? And the fantastic thing is that you all at the same time know what the other scores and, and uh, fixtures or at least the other results are that are coming in from around the game. Jerome, uh, the Springboks up against Italy. Your opinion on the Springbok team at the moment? Heine Kamea seems to be brought into some fresh blood. Yeah, JP, it's, it's good to see the, the youngsters coming through. And um, I thought on the day they've played well. I was a bit uh, disappointed in, uh, in the way Italy played. I mean, they've done well in the Six Nations, so I expected more from them. But I think the youngsters really, um, really make a statement that they're there to stay. And um, so, yeah, I think it's good for SA Rugby. There's quite a difference in this team now, uh, Morgz, if you look. I mean, this is a completely different team. If you think that guys like John Smith, Bucky Spurta, Victor Matfield, a lot of main guys, Scott Berger, they're not there anymore. It's a, if, if I look at the Springbok team, it's almost like I don't recognize this team anymore. Yeah, look, there are lots of, um, lots of changes to the team, obviously, to what we used to. But I think it's, it's about time there's some fresh blood in there, you know, just to see the youngsters coming through. And if anything, you know, these mid-year these mid tests, I think, if anything, sort of are, are, are a good time for us to blood, to blood the younger guys that are coming through. I mean, like I said last week, the guys that, that Heineken has picked has obviously been the form guys in Super 15. 
And those guys have brought that form into international rugby, which I think has been awesome. Mr. H, of course, this double header that they had for the first time, uh, what it was Scotland and Samoa, yeah. it's empty stadium. Yeah. It was empty stadium, but uh, yeah, a lot of speak about how fantastic this new initiative is and that. The, no, you're, you're I don't think it's a good thing. I mean, to sit through four hours. Well, a curtain raiser as a nation for another nation is not good. A curtain raiser a nation for another nation, but I mean, four <laughs> and a half hours of sitting in a rugby seat, yeah. um, or, do, or is this just made for TV? Probably just made for TV, but I also just want to mention, you know, that on the team itself, yeah. the Rainer Banner showed that nobody's going to take his position just willy-nilly. But isn't that just incredible that we've got a guy like that, Rainer Banner, he, he has his rough spots in the season, he was injured, he comes back, and what he does is immediately he stamps his authority. Yeah, no, he was, he was tremendous, I think. You know. And it's great for the youngsters that play with him. Yeah. You know, they, they can learn so much from him, it's fantastic. Looking forward to... Looking forward to see how these youngsters end up doing. Morgs, um, uh, you guys, uh, Hamilton's now, uh, your other team, other than your Cape rugby team, you guys got a buy <laughs> over the weekend? Yeah, we've got a buy, so yeah, I think it's come at the right time of the year for us. Um, can come back and take yeah. two weeks off and regroup and hopefully get the results going. You can't, you can't lose this weekend. Eh? No, no, you can't lose this weekend. Uh, <laughs> Jerome, um, enjoy Kenya. Yeah, JP is the first test for them. I've been working with them since last year, so they play Uganda on Saturday, the first test of the qualifying round. So, yeah. All right, Mr. M Mr. H, me and you, um, Violet, I'm with yes. Yeah. I know Morgan Newman is uh, going away for the weekend, so uh, on his little break. But those of us that are committed to. Yeah, to the sport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll those of us that are committed, will, we will. Will India Min also be at the game? All right, gentlemen, that's the end of the show. All right, the show is now <laughs> certainly going south. Morgs, have a great weekend, Jerome. Have a great weekend. Nice Thanks, to have you JP. back. Watch out for those visa expirations. Don't get kidnapped. And Mr. <laughs> H, um, uh, please uh, make sure that you are there with bells and whistles at uh, Violet's on Saturday. We'll be there, sir. There we go, folks. Violet's up against Hamad Diaz um, at Chucker Road. We'll see you there this Saturday. Join us on Facebook with those fan picks. Make sure you send them in www.facebook.com forward slash Cape Rugby TV. Have a fantastic rugby weekend. Stay dry. Spare a thought for the people that are cold and wet out there. All right? If you've got any blankets, if you've got any jerseys, make sure that you give it out. Okay? Get to one of the foundations that are supporting. See you guys next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.